This call is now being recorded. Okay, so uh, in the final discussion on North of Fry's essay, uh, uh, in the previous uh, session, we have seen that in part one of the essay, uh, he talks about the role of criticism, that what is the importance of criticism. And if we want to see that criticism uh, is uh, growing uh, progressively as a knowledge system, as other sciences are growing, then uh, critics will have to see that they, do, they just do not sit in the corner of a dark room uh, and light their candle, uh, but they come together. They all come together and standing on each other's shoulder, they try to make their observations and come out from pseudo propositions or more general kinds of observations. Beyond that, they make a significant observations, which adds to the overall value of uh, literature in, in that context. So that is what he speaks in part one. Part two, he speaks about inductive method. In second part, he speaks about inductive method. He gives a very interesting example from uh, William Shakespeare's play Hamlet, and he discusses grave digging scene. In that scene, he talked about how uh, m taking a step uh, away from uh, the scene, we find we, each and every step that we take away from the scene, we try to see variety of readings, variety of in interpretations. And what is hidden uh, as an archetype in that scene is the archetype of Leibstod is hidden uh, in the scene of grave digging scene. Uh, Leibstod means the hero who is ready to sacrifice his life for the sake of beloved. Uh, that archetype is found in that. That is what he discusses in part two. And then part three, uh, part three. In part three, uh, uh, he, he uses deductive method, uh, deductive method. And uh, as a part of deductive method, he moves from general to particular, uh, general to particular. So. Uh, uh, in terms of general way of looking, uh, he, he looks at uh, the forms of arts like uh, music and painting uh, along with literature. And from those general observations, he is coming down to the particular archety archetypes which are found in, uh, in, in literature there. Okay, so let us, let us see what he, he, he tend to say uh, in this uh, essay, in the initial part of uh, this. Okay, so uh, in the initial part, the part three uh, begins with this sentence and he says here that uh, some arts, some arts uh, move in time. Some arts move, movement of the arts. Okay move in time and for example he says music as we know that we can't see music on a single go we'll have to wait for the music if the musical tune is for three minutes then it will flow in time and we'll have to wait for three minutes time to pass to give any observation on music and others are presented in space. Other arts are presented in a space, uh, for example, painting. Painting, yeah? uh, as you know, that painting is something that we see it at a single go. Single. We do, like music, we don't have to wait for a time. We just uh, go into a gallery. There is a portrait, a painting hanging there. We just open our eyes and a single blink of an eye, we can see entire painting. We can see entire painting. So time and space, yeah? See the important words. Some arts move in time. Some are presented in space. Some are presented in space some arts are presented in space like like painting yeah okay then he says in both cases in both cases the organizing principle is recurrence is recurrence something that happens repeatedly uh, which we call 
which we call uh, recurrence in painting we call rhythm in painting uh, sorry in music we call rhythm and in painting we call it pattern we call it pattern in painting yes but there is a recurrence of something that happens in both forms of uh, uh, art thus we speak of the rhythm of music and the pattern of painting so what we say we speak of rhythm of music and we speak of pattern of painting but later to show off our sophistication we may begin to speak of the rhythm of and pattern uh, and we we start speaking of pattern of music we can find a rhythm in painting and then we can also find a pattern eh, in music for example music moves in time and afterwards when the music is over we see the entire pattern of music when i'm observing painting in space i at a single go i see a pattern in painting but when i take a distance and try to observe the painting i find that the painting has a rhythm the rhythm of sketches the rhythm of the brushes that can be seen here also in in other words all arts may be conceived both temporarily and specially specially temporarily time that is temporal and space that is spatial check the spelling eh? see the spelling s Sp p a t i a l spatial eh? something presented in space yeah? space the score of musical composition may be studied all at once a picture may be seen as the track of an intricate dance of the eye yeah. so this both when we in, when we see the intersections of between both the thing we see that music can be presented in space and painting can also be seen as temporarily opening before our eyes if we keep we come very near to painting and we start moving from one corner of the painting to another painting with our movement of the eyes here the word is dance of the eye with the dance of the eye we start seeing that uh, the painting seems to open before our eyes in time like a rhythm of uh, music also well then then north of fry says that literature literature seems to be intermediary between music and painting music and 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 painting it seems to be a kind of an intermediary uh, between uh, this so what we have here uh, what we have uh, here is that uh, we have rhythms of words and when we complete the reading of the words when we complete the reading uh, on completion on completion of the reading uh, what we see is a pattern a pattern emerges of the work of art huh? that is how literature can be seen as an intermediary between music between music and painting so this is very interesting to see that how north of fry is observing uh, this various art forms and try to see now to to give an example of this intermediary literature as an intermediary uh, between music and painting uh, we can say that uh, when i am reading a poem uh, uh, even if it is only of seven to nine lines of a sonnet a small sonnet if i am reading then also at least it will it will flow in time and take five to ten minutes so without when it is moving when my reading is going on when my dance of the eye is going on over the words of the poem it will flow in time uh, and i i have to wait till the reading is completed so it is like music 
the characteristics of music is seen there but as soon as the entire poem is read the poem becomes image eh? poem becomes a picture and i see pictorial quality of the poem the entire poetry now flashes in my uh, the eyes of my mind as an image it becomes a painting and then i see entire poem in space imagine if you are reading a novel eh? novel is a long narrative and it may take a uh, 24 hours to one week also if it is a very long novel it will so you will flow in the time while reading the novel for 24 hours to 48 hours or maybe for one full week you are flowing in the rhythm of the time and once you complete the last page the entire world of the novel is in space before you in space just like a painting now it is like a moving picture now that is it is emerging in our so that way eh, rhythm of words and on completion we see the pattern emerging eh, in 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 this uh, also but uh, north of fry is not only ending here he, he 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 now again extends this idea about rhythm and pattern to try to see that how in literature we can see the uh, the archetypes small archetypes small images that can be seen as archetype repeatedly coming kinds of things are there so uh, i i skip a, a, a few lines and then i come to this point where he discusses about the rhythm and and pattern uh and yeah just a minute let me just open that page and share the screen with you yeah, yeah okay i uh, am sharing the screen to read that part from the essay yes huh? so after after this establishing that literature is an intermediary between music and painting he says that rhythm or recurrent movement is deeply founded on the natural cycle and everything in nature that we think of as having some analogy with works of art like the flower or the bird's song grows out of a prof profound synchronization between an organism and the rhythms of its uh, environment especially that of solar year huh? especially that of solar year now see so he says rhythm huh? now in literature from where the rhythm is coming huh? from where the rhythm is coming in this and he says it comes from natural cycle huh? it comes from natural uh, cycle so what is that natural cycle that is that rhythm is a solar year huh? solar year solar year means our year is defined in terms of the movement around sun we know huh? we know that when when uh, earth uh, earth takes one round over its own axis its own axis then it is day and night it is day and night but when the the earth takes the full circle round over the sun around the sun then it is one year so approximately it takes 364 days and few hours huh? not exactly 365 but 364 days and few hours that's why we have to cut down some of the days huh? february we will have 28 days instead of 30 or 31 because it is not complete uh, 365 but little bit of that and we cut down that also so uh, this is solar year but there is a cycle there is a cycle the rhythm comes from that with animals some expressions of synchronization like the mating dances of birds could almost be called rituals but in human life a ritual seems to be something of a voluntary effort hence the magical element in it to recapture a lost rapport with the natural cycle when we see animals and in animals uh, when they mate with each other uh, when the animals mate with each other it is always connected with natural cycle but in human beings mating is not connected with natural cycle uh, we know that animals give birth to their their little ones at at a particular moment of time in a year it is not around the year like in human beings human beings give birth to their children round the year we we have missed out that cycle natural cycle with the nature in that aspect but 
animal world still follow that it is a kind of a ritual for them when that time comes in the nature it is their ritual to mate with each other why to give birth to the little ones there so that cycle is lost to 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 us a farmer must harvest his crop at a certain time of year but because this is involuntary harvesting itself is not precisely a ritual it is the deliberate expression of a will to synchronize human and natural energies at that time with which produces the harvest songs harvest sacrifices harvest folk customs that we call rituals now see here here north of rice trying to say maybe coming from james g fraser's book the golden bow or the study of the anthropologist the study of cambridge university professors uh, the anthropologist who has given that is perhaps telling that all over the world everywhere when there is a time of harvest at that time what we see is that harvest songs are written now if you see a song that is the literature so how is your lit literature coming into existence what rhythm is the origin of literature following that is the rhythm of natural cycle whenever there is a time of harvest you see that people are singing the song then they are dancing also there are dances also and then there are some rituals also a ritual is a performance in terms of play ritual ne apre natak tarupe tarike pan joi sake so what ritual you perform is your is your play performance your songs are there that is your your poetry and around that around the ritual you will tell a myth the myth is your narrative it is your story it is your novel uh, in that form in ritual then we may find the origin of narrative thus uh, we say that the rituals the rituals uh, which are obviously connected with the the with the harvest time that is agricultural time or any of that time that is about nature uh, from there we see the origin of narrative a ritual being a temporal sequence of acts in which the conscious meaning of uh, or significance is latent it can be seen by an observer but is largely concealed from the participators themselves the pull of ritual is towards pure narrative which if there could be such a thing would be automatic and unconscious repetition we should notice too the regular tendency of ritual to become encyclopedic all the important recurrences in nature the day uh, the phases of the moon the seasons and solstices of the year the the crises of existence from birth to death get rituals attached to them and most of the higher religions most of the higher religions are equipped with a definitive total body of rituals suggestive if we may put it so of the entire range of potentially significant actions in human life all potential significant actions in human life gets recorded huh, gets recorded in a similar way huh, in this huh, in this term uh, here so this is what he says rhythm huh, from where we get rhythm how is our life rhythmic obviously from the natural cycle solar cycle but along with that what we do is that we have harvest seasons like animals have their mating time we have our harvesting time and around harvesting we have songs dances and rituals and we have very rich rituals all all higher religions and religions which are not organized in terms of islam or christianity all those religions they they all rituals are connected with natural cycle of the day natural way that everything is organized also uh, uh, you, you uh, uh, do you know that why why uh, Uh, uh this uh, international yoga day uh, international yoga day is celebrated on 21st june why that day is selected you know that international yoga day is a new phenomenon uh, it is a new phenomenon but why uh, why 21st june uh, uh, was selected by united nations uh, why it was proposed by india also uh, that 21st june should be celebrated as international day for yoga or yog international day why that 21st june because uh, this day is a uh, longer than other days uh, it is a longer day why is it a longer day why is it uh, a longer day as compared to other
yes anybody Yes. <clears throat> Anybody? Yes. We have two such days. One falls on in June and another in December. In December also. So these are the days where sun is changing the direction. Sun's direction. It is moving towards northern side and southern side. The movement of uh, 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 the sun. Now after June, it will start moving towards south. We, it will. We will feel here because Earth is changing. That's why we have a feeling that now. The Earth's uh, the movement will be towards Dakshin Dakshin uh, and in December we find it is Uttarayan, hmm? Uttar taraf any this hai, Uttarayan. Yeah. So uh, these are changing days. Huh? These dates are not fixed. It is in calendar. It is fixed, but in natural cycle it keeps on changing. Once upon a time, what we now see in December might be happening in January. So we have a kite flying festival. We call it Uttarayan. Huh? Uttar taraf ayan karu. Uttar taraf disha karvi. Now this is another day from where it will move towards the thing. So from that day onwards, the 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 movement of the sun will start huh, change. That is called solstice. Huh? That is called solstice. That is the reference that comes here. All these days of solstice are celebrated in one or the another way. How do we celebrate? By creating one or the other kinds of rituals. And then those rituals are happening recurrently. Those rituals happen recurrently. And then the participating agencies, like we are the participating people in the ritual, we do it automatically. We keep on doing the ritual automatically without knowing why we are doing it, without knowing why we are doing but we become a participating agency into all those rituals. And then we get naturalized with those rituals and then when we sit down to write our work of art automatically that that get expressed uh, in in one or the another form in our work of art they becomes our metaphor also they they control our narrative uh, and other things uh, also so that is about rhythm uh, rhythm from natural cycle from ritualistic life that come in literature then pattern uh, the another point is patterns of imagery on the other hand or fragments of significance are oracular in origin. They are oracular in oracular means little bit mystical, little bit mystical oracle from oracle it comes and derive from the epiphanic moment, the flash of instantaneous comprehension with no direct reference to time, the importance of which is indicated by uh, Cassirer in myth and language in this work. He, he refers to this that by the time we get them, by the time we get the patterns of images, it is already there in our proverbs, in our riddles, in proverbs, uh, in, in riddles, uh, uh, commandments, uh, and etiological folk tales. There is already a considerable element of narrative in, in them. They too are encyclopedic in tendency, building up a total structure of significance or doctrines from random and empiric fragments. And just as pure narrative would be an unconscious act, so pure significance would be uh, an incommunicable state of consciousness for communication uh, begins by constructing the, the narrative uh, uh, also. There. Now, this part uh, of uh, what North of Fry writes here in terms of uh, the pattern. Uh, uh, if you want to try to understand that in, in still a more simpler form, uh, then we can see that uh, when you see this word, uh, words like uh, 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 proverbial verbs or you say kahavat like morna inda chitarva na pade. So what pattern or image you get is peacock. A peacock uh, that is an image that you get. But you know that you have to go beyond this pattern. The meaning of this pattern is not in the words. It is somewhere else. So we automatically come to know that this this kahavat morna inda 
as such has nothing to do with the image that is coming before my eyes but it it is it, it says that jeva baap eva beta jevi ma evi dikri that is that is the sense that uh, the the like father like son uh, that is the sense that is uh, rooted in that now people may say that what has peacock to do with all this thing what has peacock to do but we don't question that because we have adjusted ourselves with those patterns which are already there uh, imagery patterns are already there so this and from there he says myth uh, myth is the central informing power that gives archetypal significance to the ritual and the archetypal narrative of this patterns the oracle oracular pattern also so if there is anything where we get both the things together if you want to see this in in terms of a, a kind of a pictorial representation if you want to see it in in that way then Uh, just a Okay, if you want to see na, it in in this term, then uh, we can say that uh, there is rhythm in form of rituals, which are which are becoming a part of our life as a part of natural natural cycle of solar system. Uh, this rhythm, and then we have patterns. and the imageries uh, that come as a part of this painting idea uh, patterns in this now both uh, rhythm and pattern if both these things are manifested anywhere it is in our myths and then we have our mythology our mythology has both the rhythm as well as the pattern and then we when we grow into uh, into a culture or into a society or a religion we we naturally uh, incorporate incorporate or we acquire all these things naturally naturally we acquire uh, this mythology rhythm and pattern uh, in different uh, forms so all writers uh, writers or readers when they say that this archetypes become very natural to everybody uh, it becomes very naturally in their writings also so myth is the central uh, myth is the central informing power that gives archetypal significance to the ritual and archetypal narrative oracles hence the myth is the archetype hence the myth is the archetype uh, uh, though it might be convenient to say myth only when referring to narrative and archetype when speaking of significance in the solar cycle of the day uh, see this in the solar cycle of the day the seasonal cycle of the year and the organic cycle of human life there is a single pattern of significance out of which myth constructs a central narrative around a figure who is partly the sun partly vegetative fertility and partly a god or archetypal human being so what we see here if we see we see that the pattern like there is a single day then there is a year single day the 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 rotation of the earth on its axis day uh, there is a birth there is the prime of the day and there is a death of the day then there is a year then there is year because uh, earth revolves around uh, the sun so we have that uh, the season coming and going in a cyclical manner and then third very important is our own life 
we are born we reach to our prime and we die that is what we see with every human being so this all patterns and rhythms uh, which keeps on recurrently happening around us that gives us uh, the understanding of our uh, literatures the crucial importance of this myth has been forced on literary critics by jung and fraser in particular but the several books now available on it are not always systematic in their approach for which reason i supply the following table of its phases and then uh, he gave these examples and phases that there is a dawn uh, spring time which we have discussed earlier uh, also uh, so first is the dawn uh, spring the birth phase second is zenith summer and the marriage of triumph the, the second phase third is the sunset autumn the death phase that is what uh, he, he discusses in this uh, pattern uh, here okay? so these are these are some of this uh, way of uh, how deductively he reaches to those points uh, that how in a larger structure you can see the natural cycle from where all our understanding of rhythm and pattern emerges so with the help of music and painting he enters into this debate and comes out with the idea that all our narratives uh, our literatures are rooted in our myth and our myth is rooted in our rituals and our rituals are rooted in our natural cycle of everything so everything is cyclical so far as nature will move in cyclical mode we are going to move in a circular cyclical mode you will see many people say that in nature everything is circular you will not see angles in uh, in nature everything is cyclical and circular in 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 nature the natural uh perhaps nature is designed uh, 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 self designed in such a way that it believes in cyclical nature of everything cyclical and circular movement is something that is at the root of the thing and those patterns uh, uh keep on uh, uh, happening again and again day and night keep on happening again and again uh, uh, uh winter monsoon summer keeps on happening again and again what we call it recurrent it keeps on recurrently happening so when we study what is recurrently happening in literature we are trying to look at archetypes in literature so you can say that well there is always a beginning of a novel so well beginning and ending is the archetype we will say that there is always a central figure in the in literature so hero is the archetype you will see that there are these kinds of characters always in literature time and again they keep on coming in this way or that way that is the pattern that is the the, the archetype of literature you will see that this keeps on happening in literature like love keeps on happening in literature then love is an archetype you will see that murder keeps on happening and then the revenge for the murder you say that that is the archetype of 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 literature we see that characters are on journey again and again in so many times we see that characters are on journey they are outcast Uh, they are on journey they are searching for something they are always on search so many literature we find that people are on search well search quest uh, quest is the archetype journey is an archetype so that is how we can start looking uh, at it then comes places uh, places there is desert is there garden is there hills and mountains are there ruins are there we see animal world there are sheep and wolves tigers animals bears different kind of animals they all have their own symbolical significance which is coming from our experience with the animals right? with our experience with the and the animals which were very friendly with us who were not killing us the animals which were not killing us they are they are our friendly animals and the animals which we were afraid of they become predatory and we designed them in a similar way and if you want to see the basic pattern and rhythm of animal world then the best form of stories are panchtantra stories yeah? panchtantra stories which again you will find in all the cultures yeah? you will see that aesop's fables yeah? in the greeks also they used to have aesop's fable if you go to the african world you will again find some such animal stories you go to the chinese world you find that they also have their own panchtantra stories everybody on this earth they have the, get, told the stories uh initial stories the beginning of the stories where they were all animals but they were talking like human beings they were behaving like human beings and that that also can be seen that how we look at the animal world from uh, as a part of our experience with uh, them also so that is how this this uh, this emerges here and finally uh, finally we can say that if uh, north of fry says that if we want to see that uh, uh literature literature and criticism uh, literature and criticism 
uh, has its own very interesting value uh, where uh, in in the world uh, then then uh, then uh, it says that uh, the way the way uh, our wisdom yeah, the way our our wisdom uh, our wisdom yeah, is is taken care by philosophy philosophy is a uh, is an academic discipline uh, philosophy is an academic discipline but all our human wisdom uh, all our human wisdom is being discussed in philosophy all human actions uh, all our human actions are recorded in history in in history uh, all this you can say human wisdom and human actions the way they are recorded in philosophy and in history if you want to see that similar to philosophy and history if literature also has to stand then uh, our literature human literature human literature should be recorded in criticism should be recorded in criticism uh, there so that is very important that then the world literature this is human uh, literature yeah it is not like gujarati literature or it is not like uh, what we call it as english literature or chinese literature or european literature beyond all those things beyond all human attempts at literature yeah? if it has to narrow down uh, and will want to have the respect as philosophy or history then uh, the criticism has to grow as uh, as a branch of study uh, where uh, all our attempts at reading literature is recorded uh, is recorded in its proper uh, context so much organized study of literature is what north of fry wants to say he says that we it is possible to see the skeleton of literature it is possible to see that uh, there is one root of literature uh, it is possible to see that all literature emerges from the single root so if you have an idea that my literature is separate your literature is separate so we can't see all literatures together then he says that don't see it in that way all literatures look at the skeleton of literature it is similar skeleton of literature is similar go beyond culture go beyond religion go beyond the language bhasha ni pehle par chaila jao कल्चर उपलू आवरण से कूदरत कल्चर ने दूर हटसेलो कल्चर ए कपड़ा है दूर करो कूदरत जाओ पड़दो कूदरत कल्चर ए पड़दो धर्म ए पड़दो एने बदाने दूर कर इफ यू सी देचर देन एवरीवेर वेर एवर ह्यूमन बीइंग्स हेव टोल्ड एनी फॉर्म ऑफ स्टोरीज देर इज वननेस देर इज सीमिलरिटी एंड सो ओल लिटरेचर्स केन बी स्टडीड साइमल्टेनियली देन like wisdom is taken care of by philosophy and philosophy is considered as mother of all knowledges philosophy considered as mother of all knowledges all human actions is beautifully recorded by historians in history the same way criticism can grow as an interesting branch to record whatever human attempts are being done in literature also so that is the final part where he deductively tries to look at the rhythm and the pattern uh, borrowing ideas from music and painting to see how that is found in literature also any questions uh, anybody so far as north of fry's archetypes of literature is concerned very interesting examples we have already discussed uh, in yesterday's uh, discussion so i think you don't want to have any confusion in reading uh, archetypes either in films or in novels either as an overall narrative strategy or in bits and pieces that how it can be found in various aspect also okay. any questions anybody okay so if there are no questions then uh, let me finally announce that today you will get an online quiz uh, in google classroom i will share the link so the online test and uh, along with that uh thinking activity yeah? we have discussed the questions of thinking activity so i hope you won't have any doubt in thinking about this uh it i will give one more task that if you can pick up one beautiful scene from any of the film 
and try to study some of the archetypes as we have done yesterday from a scene from satyam shivam sundaram and akri rasta if you can pick up a small scene of 3 to 5 minutes uh, from any film and if you can study and put it on your blog that also will be interesting to observe or if you pick up a poem and study archetype that also will be good or a larger narrative also you can take so that one be one be will be one more added task that will be given to you as a part of thinking activity apart from the questions that we have seen uh, there this questions we have uh, seen uh, in the in the beginning yeah. today uh, these are the questions which we have shared with everybody yeah. this questions you have to uh, ponder upon and write something about this and one more point will be added and that will be about study either a scene from a film or a poem or uh, a narrative larger narrative and try to uh, uh, do archetypal criticism uh, try to do archetypal criticism uh, 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 in that okay, okay. Uh, any questions yes sir ha yes bhumika yeah uh, sir uh, can we define this uh... whole article uh, ar archetype lecture, uh, literature in uh, one or two three line uh, can we describe in uh, yes so uh, do you want to describe or you want me to describe uh, it no uh, very shortly can we give a main message hmm? what is uh, this uh, archetype lectures uh, literature's main message i uh, means you want to give that or you are asking for the main message Oh, asking, I will. Asking, okay. Uh, when we started our discussion, uh, the first our first talk. If you will see that video, the first introductory talk. Huh, it was about that. That how we can uh, see that what is the simple way of looking at this. And I would suggest you to uh, uh, let me let me open this. Uh, if you will also refer to this book, uh, that is glossary of literary terms. Uh, glossary of literary terms by M H Abraham. Uh, glossary of literary term. You will find an entry. Uh, archetypal criticism. In the presentation which we have discussed, uh, uh, in that also we have put this in the very first slide. Uh, the very first slide of our presentation also uh, is talking about uh, 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 the same idea. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can open that PPT and share the screen. Ah, here it is. Let me. Ah, are you able to see? Yeah, this uh, this uh, slides in the very first slide. Huh, you will see here this. Yeah? So, in literary criticism, the term archetype denotes narrative designs, patterns of action, character types, themes, and images which recur, huh, which recur in a wide variety of works of literature as well as in myths, dreams, and even social rituals. and when you study when you study what is recurrently happening what is keeping on repeatedly happening you are doing archetypal criticism such recurrent items are often claimed to be the result of elemental and universal patterns in the human psyche whose effective embodiment in a literary work evokes a profound response from the attentive reader because he or she shares the psychic archetypes expressed by by the author this is that point now are you getting this point or not or you are still getting any confusion in this uh, uh, yes sir i have ha uh, yes uh, uh, because uh, we uh, we see the example that uh, the rhythm and the pattern uh, i 
my question is that uh, the rhythm is a word uh, normally connected with uh, music mm. and uh, mm. the pattern is uh, the word uh, normally connected with picture but uh, here is a very different look no how, how so, is it different yeah how, how do you see it is different um because here uh, here is uh, uh, i i found that uh, the pattern word uh, the rhythm is uh, we when we analyzed on the paper that uh, the rhythm of brushes or uh, uh, hmm. you define that on paper i because uh, ha, ha. Yes, yeah yes ha. so uh, i think it is opposition of the literature no uh, literature is intermediary between music and painting that was the point intermediary literature is inter means literature has both the elements of rhythm as well as pattern so how we so see it means when we read literature hmm? yes uh, it means uh, rhythm is connected with uh, uh, pattern or uh, music too ha it it is connected with music but in literature has both the elements of uh, that pattern as well as rhythm are you getting that point literature is intermediary yes, yes. between both painting and music so like uh, in literature you have to flow in time also and once it is over then you can see it in totality so it is both it has both pattern as well as yes, rhythm yes. so then then what north of fry is asking that from where is the rhythm of literature coming from where then he says it it comes from natural cycle of the day our all learning as such happens uh, from nature and so the way nature moves in cyclical manner whether it is a single day whether it is a one year or the our human life huh? our life also is cyclical so from birth to death it keeps on moving so uh, that, that's why uh, he says that we have that rhythm in our literature in different way and the same rhythm is found in our rituals also so if we go back beyond literature sahitya ni pehli par apre chalya jaye ke tyare bhasha pan haji nahti tyare pan apre apre jat ne rhythm ane pattern ma abhivyakt karta hata tyare apre koi harvesting season aave rutu ni tyare apre dance karta hata eva geeto gata hata you you might be seeing ke aje pan koi apre tya youth festival ma mote bhage ekado group dance to evo hoy j ke jema pelu jinga lala jinga lala loko karta hoy it means african dance ema koi bhasha na samjhay tamne but dance ni ek rhythm hoy ane and people are wildly dancing the language is not understood this to e j apre badhani e reet hati ek samay badhani e e e pattern hati e rhythm hati apre पेटर्न एट दृश्य साटर्न एक समय प्रमाण कर रिधम एंड देन वी गोट लैंग्वेज अपने थोड़ा संस्कृत थता गया अपने सभ्यता तरफ आगे गया भाषा आ पी लखवा सीख्या अपने लखवा बहुत मॉडर्न वस्तु वेरी मॉडर्न वी वेर हेविंग ओनली ओरल ट्रेडिशन लखवा बहुत मोडे मोडे अपने सीख्या जय रायण ने महाभारत खरेखर अपने कही वाल्मीकि के वेद व्यास तो ये ये लखी नती सुश्रुत थी ओरल अवस्था लेटर ऑन इट वोज रिटर्न लेटर ऑन इट वोज रिटर्न फ्रॉम द ओरल ट्रेडिशन आज गाम डोसी माओ हजी एवं के लग्न गीतों गाती हे गाता हे कि जे कहीं लखेला तमने जो नहीं मे कोई पुस्तक में नहीं हो लोग ने आवड़ता हे कोई रहे कोई बेसी ने लखवा मंडे के चलो आ लखी लो आ डोसी मो मरी जैसे तरह आ ज्ञान है समाप्त थी जैसे क्या लखी लीए पी लोग लखवा पर आन दे राइट सो राइटिंग हेज कम मच लेटर ऑन इन इन दीस एंटायर मुवमेंट अर्लियर इट इज ऑलवेज ओरल ओरल पे शू भाषा पी तरह रिच्युअल्स रिच्युअल्स कोई ने कोई रीते लोग करता रहता होने एट्ले रिच्युअल्स रिच्युअल्स जय हो तरह क्या कोई ने प्रश्न कोई ने कोई युवान ने कि आ शू काम आप करे तो तरह कोई वृद्ध व्यक्ति वर्ता कही हो वर्ता वर्ता एट वर्ता वर्ता एट फिक्शन वर्ता एट कल्पना हकीकत नहीं वर्ता हकीकत नहीं देट इज वेरी इम्पोर्टंट टू कीप इन माइंड के चलो वर्ता तरीके बराबर पे हकीकत न हो द्रौपदी बिचारी एक सभा 
ચીરહરણ થતું હોય પછી શું થયું હશે પછી શું એ સાવ નગ્ન એમને એમ ફરતી હશે કે પછી કોઈ કોઈ ક્યાં નતું તો તો પછી ચલો વાર્તા કહું કે પછી કૃષ્ણ એ એમને સાડી મોકલી સાડી મોકલી અને ત્યાં સાડી પહોંચી ગઈ હવે સાડી ક્યારેય ન મોકલી શકાય પહોંચી જ ના શકે એ વાર્તા છે એ કલ્પના છે એવું ન હોય એ એ ત્યાં એ બે સહાય અવસ્થામાં જ રહી હોય દ્રૌપદી પછી બધા વિખરાઈ ગઈ હોય સભા પણ એ એ રીતે ચમત્કારિક રીતે સાડીઓ ન પહોંચે ચમત્કાર એટલે આપણી વાર્તાઓ ફિક્શન ફિક્શન એલિમેન્ટ દેટ ગેટ એટેચ ઇન ટુ અવર નેરેટિવ ઓલ્સો દેટ ઇઝ વોટ આ હિસ ઇઝ સો વેન યુ વોન્ટ ટુ ડુ આર્કિટાઇપલ ક્રિટિસિઝમ વોટ યુ સ્ટડી ઇઝ દેટ વોટ ઇઝ રિપીટેડલી હેપનિંગ રિપીટેડલી રિકરન્ટલી કઈ વસ્તુ વારંવાર આવે છે તો લોકો એમ કે લોકો ગુલાબ ને બહુ યાદ કરે છે ગુલાબ રોઝ તો એમ થાય રોઝ ને ક્યારે યાદ કરે તો કે પીપલ સે દેટ માય લવ ઇઝ લાઈક અ રેડ રેડ રોઝ તો એક કવિએ તો એના પ્રેમ સાથે એને રોઝ ને બીજો મોટા ભાગના પ્રેમી કવિઓ રોઝ ની ઇમેજ ને પ્રેમ સાથે જોડીને જોતા હશે મોટા ભાગના લોકો એને પ્રેમ સાથે જ જોયે તો એક રિકરન્ટ પેટર્ન બની રોઝ બીકેમ અ સિમ્બોલ ઓફ લવ ઇન દેટ દેટ કોન્ટેક્સ તો એ રીતે એની સાથે એ વસ્તુ જોડાતી જાય રિકરન્ટલી એનો ઉપયોગ થાય એટલે એને એક અર્થ મળી જતો હોય છે એ અર્થ થી એ લોકો એને જોતા હોય છે યુ કેન સી કે જે લોકોને સાહિત્ય બહુ વાંચ્યું ન હોય તો એના માટે એ રિધમ પકડવી બહુ અઘરી છે એ એ રિધમ ને ન પકડી શકે અથવા એ પેટર્ન ને પણ ન સમજી શકે કે આ કઈ બાબત ની વાત અને આ કઈ રીતે કરવામાં તો એ શક્યતા છે કે એ થશે એમને વાર પણ લાગે એને કદાચ અંદર અંદર અહેસાસ થાય કે ના ચાંદ ને જોવું અને પ્રેમ ની લાગણી થાય એવું ઊંડે ઊંડે કઈક થાય છે તો એ ક્યાંથી આવે છે કદાચ એ કુદરત માંથી આવે છે શીતળ ચાંદની ની રાત હોય તો બધાને એક સાતા મળતી હોય સાતા બધાને મળતી હોય તો એની સાથે એ એ ચાંદની નું રૂપક જોડાયેલું હોય તો ઊંડે ઊંડે આપણને કઈક એવું લાગે આજે ઊંડે ઊંડે લાગે એ સાયકિક રેસિડ્યુ એ પ્રાઇમોડિયલ ઇમેજીસ જે કાલ યુંગ કે છે કે આવું કદાચ આપણા કલેક્ટિવ અનકોન્શિયસમાં હોઈ શકે એટલે જયારે કોઈ કવિ કે સાહિત્યકાર કોઈ એક રૂપક નો ઉપયોગ કરે છે ત્યારે ઊંડે ઊંડે મને એમ થાય છે કે ના કઈક સમજાય છે એ અનુભૂતિ ને હું એ ભાવ ને હું સમજી શકું છું એવો મને ઊંડો અહેસાસ થાય કોઈ મને પૂછે કે કયો અહેસાસ છે બતાવો તો મારે ભાષા જોઈએ મારે ક્રિટિસિઝમ જોઈએ મારી પાસે ક્રિટિસિઝમ ની લેંગ્વેજ હોય તો હું અભિવ્યક્ત કરી શકું નહીતર બસ હું એમ કહું કે ના બસ મજા આવી પણ શું કામ મજા આવી એ ખબર નહીં આંખમાં આંસુ આવી ગયા કઈક વસ્તુ જોઈ અને આંખમાં અચાનક ત્યારે આપણે કે શું કામ આંખમાં આંસુ આવી ગયા એ તો કાલ્પનિક છે હું ફિલ્મ જોઉં છું એ તો કાલ્પનિક મને ખબર છે કે આ બધા એક્ટિંગ કરે છે તો કેમ આંખમાં આંસુ આવી ગયા કઈક હતું સાયકિક રેસિડિયુમાં જે ભેગું થતું હતું કલેક્ટિવ અનકોન્શિયસમાં કોઈ એવું હતું કે એમણે મારા આંખના આંસુ મારા કંટ્રોલ બહાર ચાલ્યા ગયા મારે રડવું નતું પણ આંખે રડવાનું શરૂ કરી દીધું મારે મારી કોઈ ઈચ્છા નહોતી પણ એ થઈ ગયું કુદરતી રીતે તો એ શું કામ થતું હશે કોઈ સાયકિક રેસિડિયુ હોય કોઈ કલેક્ટિવ અનકોન્શિયસ હોય કોઈ પ્રાઇમોડિયલ ઇમેજીસ હોય એના દ્વારા આ ભાવ આપણે મહેસૂસ કરી શકતા હોય પણ આ બધાની વાત કરવી હોય આપણે તો આપણી પાસે ક્રિટિસિઝમ ની લેંગ્વેજ જોઈએ લેંગ્વેજ ઓફ ક્રિટિસિઝમ દેટ ઇઝ ઓલ્સો વોટ નોર્થ ઓફ ફ્રાઇસીઝ કે ભાવ તો બરાબર પણ તમારે એની જયારે વાત કરવી હશે ત્યારે તમારી પાસે ભાષા જોશે તેના વગર તમે એ વાત નહીં નહીં પહોંચાડી શકો અથવા નહીં કરી શકો બીજા લોકો સાથે ક્યારે કોઈ નવી ઇમેજ આવે આપણા નજરમાં નવું આર્કિટ ટાઈપ ઉભું થાય ત્યારે થોડો આનંદ આવે જોવાનો જૂના બીબા ઢાળ આવતું જાય તો બહુ મજા ના આવે કે બીબા ઢાળ વસ્તુ બધી ચાલે છે અને વર્ષોથી સાહિત્યમાં એ બધી વસ્તુનો ઉપયોગ થતો હોય તો યુ ડોન્ટ ફીલ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ એટેચમેન્ટ ટુ ધોઝ સ્ટોરીઝ પણ નવી વાર્તા ત્યારે કે કંઈક નવું કંઈક કરે સો વેન આઈ વોઝ વોચિંગ ધીસ વેબ સિરીઝ પાતાલ લોક પાતાલ લોક વેબ સિરીઝ ઇન પાતાલ લોક વેબ સિરીઝ દે યુઝ ધ વેરી ઇન્ટરેસ્ટિંગ આર્કિટાઈપ ઓફ ડોગ ડોગ નો એક આર્કિટાઈપ એ ઉપયોગ કરે ડોગ ની એવી રીતે એમણે વાત મૂકી કે એક વ્યક્તિ જેની હત્યા કરવાની હતી તેની હત્યા પેલો હત્યારો એટલે નથી કરતો કારણ કે એ જયારે હત્યા કરવા જાય છે ત્યારે એ વ્યક્તિની પત્ની અને બંને જણા ત્યાં ઉભા છે એના દરવાજાની બહાર ઉભા છે રોડ પાસે પતિ ઓફિસે જવાની તૈયારીમાં હતો ત્યારે પેલા હત્યારાઓ ગાડીમાં એવા છે ગન ટાંકી રાખી છે હત્યા કરીને ભાગી જવાનું હતું પણ એ નથી કરતા તો પછી આપણને ધીરે ધીરે સસ્પેન્સ તરીકે ખબર પડે છે એમાં કે એટલે નથી કરતો કારણ કે એ એમની પત્ની છે એ એક રખડું કૂતરાને 
કઈક ભોજન કરાવતી હતી રખડુ કુતરાને ભોજન કરાવતી હતી એટલે પેલો અટકી ગયો હથિયાર અને એ કે છે કે ના આમ નહીં મારે મારા ગુરુ સાથે વાત કરવી છે મારા ગુરુ સાથે મારે વાત કરવી છે તો ગુરુ ને ફોન લગાવે છે કઈ જવાબ નથી આવતો નો રિપ્લાય થાય છે એમાં સમય ચાલ્યો જાય છે પેલો વ્યક્તિ એની કારમાં બેસીને ઓફિસે ચાલ્યો જાય ને હત્યા થતી નથી આખો પ્લાન છે એ ફિયાસ્કો થઈ જાય છે આખા પ્લાન તો પછી આપણે થઈ કે શું કામ પાક કુતરાને ખવડાવવા જેવી નાનકડી એવી શુલ્લક બાબતમાં આ વ્યક્તિ એ હત્યા ન કરી આખી વાર્તા નો પ્લોટ બદલાઈ ગયો એની આજુબાજુ તો પછી આપણને ખ્યાલ આવે કે એના ગુરુ હતા એ સતત એમ કેતા કે જે વ્યક્તિ રખડું કુતરાઓનું ધ્યાન રાખતા હોય એને ભોજન કરાવતા હોય એ દિલ ના બહુ સાચા હોય એ ખરાબ લોકો નથી હોતા એટલે એમને એમ થયું કે મારે આની હત્યા કરવાની છે આ તો રખડું કુતરાને ભોજન કરાવે છે આ ખરાબ માણસ નહીં હોય તો મારે શું કામ એની હત્યા કરવી એ તેમાં એ એ ગૂંચવાયેલો રહે છે એ એ પ્લોટ છે જયારે પાંડવો કુરુક્ષેત્ર પૂરું કરી અને પછી એ લોકો કે હવે અમારે રાજ નથી કરવું બધા જ ગુરુજનો મૃત્યુ પાયમાં છે ભાઈઓ બધા મૃત્યુ પાયમાં છે હવે તો હસ્તિનાપુર માં રહેવાની જ ઈચ્છા નથી અને બધા મોક્ષ માર્ગે હિમાલય તરફ જવા માંડે છે અને ત્યાં જતા હતા ત્યારે એક કૂતરું એની પાછળ પાછળ જતું પછી બધા એક પછી એક મરતા જાય છે રસ્તામાં છેલ્લે ધર્મરાજ યુધિષ્ઠિર જતા હોય છે અને છેલ્લે એને જયારે સ્વર્ગ કારણ કે સાચા બોલા હતા એ ક્યારેય ખોટું નતા બોલા એક જ વખત નરોવા કુંજરોવા કરેલું હતું એમણે એટલે એને પછી કહે કે તમે સ્વર્ગ આવી જાવ તો કે નહીં આ કૂતરું મારી સાથે પહેલેથી આવે છે એ આવે તો જ હોવ એને લઈને જ આવું જો કે કૂતરાનું કર્મ નથી સ્વર્ગમાં આવવાનું એ ના આવી શકે તો કે નહીં એના વગર તો હું પણ ના આવું તો મહાભારતમાં એક રખડું કુતરાની વાર્તા છે એ કઈ પાલતુ કૂતરું નતું એ કોઈ પાલતુ પોમેરિયન નતું કે જેને ટ્રેનિંગ આપ્યું હોય પેપર રખડું કૂતરું સ્ટ્રે ડોગ સ્ટ્રે ડોગ સો દેન વી સ્ટાર્ટ લુકિંગ બધે આપણે ડોગ્સ જોવાનું શરૂ કરીએ એન્ડ વી ફાઇન્ડ ઓ વેરી ઇન્ટરેસ્ટિંગ વે વી કેન રીડ લિટરેચર વેસ્ટલેન્ડમાં પણ ડોગ જોવા મળે આપણને પછી પેલા આપણે વેસ્ટલેન્ડમાં ડોગ ન જોયો હોય યાદ પણ હોય પછી ઓ આમાં પણ ડોગ છે પેલા તો વુલ્ફ હતું ટી એસ એલિયટે વુલ્ફ નું ડોગ કર્યું હતું ઓરિજિનલ સાહિત્ય કૃતિ જેનો રેફરન્સ લીધેલો છે એમાં તો વુલ્ફ હતું બી બી કેરફુલ અબાઉટ ધ વુલ્ફ ઇઝ ધ ફો ઓફ હ્યુમન બિંગ એ તો માણસો નો દુશ્મન છે ફો એફ ઓ ઈ ફો એનિમી એન્ડ હિયર ઇઝ ઇઝ બીવેર ઓફ ડોગ ઇઝ અ ફ્રેન્ડ ઓફ હ્યુમન બિંગ ડોગ ઇઝ અ ફ્રેન્ડ ઓફ હ્યુમન બિંગ બીવેર ઓફ ડોગ પછી અચાનક આપણે વેઇટિંગ ફોર ગોડો જ જોઈએ તો ત્યાં ડોગ નું સોંગ છે બીજો એક્ટ શરૂ થાય ત્યારે વ્લાદિમીર એક ગીત ગાતો હોય છે અને એ ગીત છે એ કૂતરાનું ગીત હતું કે એક કૂતરું રસોડામાં જાય છે કઈક લેવા માટે અને ઘરના લોકોએ રખડું કૂતરાને જોયું ને જોરથી મારે છે ને કૂતરો મરી જાય છે પછી બધા કૂતરા ભેગા થઈ અને એની કબર ખોદે છે ને કૂતરાને ડાટે છે આવું ગીત છે વેઇટિંગ ફોર ગોડોત માપ દેન અગેન સડનલી વી ફાઇન્ડ લિંકિંગ ઓર રિકરન્ટ પેટર્ન ઓફ સ્ટ્રે ડોગ્સ and we we start seeing something very interesting in the image of a uh, dog uh, 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 also the, so that is that is how uh, 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 this is archetypal criticism ke ek vastu kyank joye thodu ajug tu lage ane chalo apre ene link shodva mandiye anek sahityo ma myth ma mahakavyo ma contemporary culture ma jaharato ma popular culture ma badhe j apre jovanu shuru kariye and we find something very interesting emerging out of those things that is the that is what archetypal critics do yeah, this is how they find patterns uh, in various literature gani pattern hidden che haji pan haji pan anek pattern no avi hidden uh, bethi che so apre e pattern pakdi sakiye tame je sahitya kavitao khub vanchta hoy to ema pattern shodho filmo bo jota hoy to ema pattern shodho uh, 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 whatever uh, whatever form of literature you are uh, you are enjoying I try to see various kinds of pattern that is what archetypal critics do huh, in that case does it make the point clear bhumika yes sir yes okay any other uh, questions anybody any doubt don't hesitate to ask if you have any question or doubt if you ask questions we can we can uh, give more examples to explain the point if you don't ask questions then then it reduces the chances to discuss it further so it is uh, in a physical class it is very easy to ask any questions in online version it is very difficult eh, to 
to ask or raise question but still eh, we keep on asking you if you have any questions there or comment or anything that you want to do eh, you can do that okay? yes anybody okay if then there are no questions then we can end our session uh, the archetypal criticism and as i told you you will get online quiz as well as thinking activity in google uh, classroom eh, there okay? uh, okay let me end the recording